and budget. It could be a very confusing and different program, especially if you have followed Dave Ramsey at all. So basically it's zero dollar budgeting. And this is a huge but, and this is something that YNAB is very adamant about. You only budget the dollars that you have. So you don't budget for the full month. If you get paid two times a month, you only budget with that money that you have when it comes in. Because I was a brand new budgeter just back in June, and I am only now at December getting a, getting a real handle on it, am I really starting to understand what works for me and because I am paid bi-monthly, meaning that I get paid twice a month and it's not every two weeks, it's twice a month. It's once on the 10th and once on the 25th. Um, and I have different fixed expenses that comes out of those two paychecks. So I have things set up a little bit differently and I wanted to basically just go over those things with you. So let's go ahead and dive in. Um, when you get to YNAB, you're going to have an, a, an option to set up a new budget. Okay, so we're going to call this one um, Beginner Budgeting. All right, you can name it whatever you want. Uh, my very first one, I think I called it uh, Living to Save Budget. Um, you get your currency amount, whether it's US dollars. I mean, they've got all of them in here. You can do your norm number format differently depending on where you're at. You can do your plate currency placement uh, and your date format. So then we're going to hit create a budget. This is going to pop up. YNAB has specific categories basically already laid out for you, which is a really good start. Um, but the one thing I want to mention is before we go in and do any of this and, and follow along with me, try not to jump ahead, uh, we want to add our accounts. So when you click on add account, you have the option of linked and unlinked. So typically I link my accounts, but I do add my expenses or my transactions, I should say, manually. And then when they come through, we can link them and connect them. And I'll show you guys that in a different video. So at the, at the moment, don't worry about it. Um, but for beginning, I would definitely suggest starting on a linked account. So what we're going to go ahead and do here, because I do have a couple of them already attached, we're just going to go ahead and grab this one. So I have my interest checking account. So I can, I, and I name it by the bank because I have a few accounts and I want to make sure that I've got that set up. So there's that one's done. Let's add another account. And when you first walk through this, you have to find your financial institution and you actually have to log into it. And if you can't find it and you can't log in, then what you can do um, is send off a request to YNAB. Although I would say that more than likely they do have your um, bank attached. So this one is my interest, my high interest. on this card that I am trying to pay off as soon as it gets through. So, and on my Capital One, you'll see I have a couple different accounts. I have another savings account. I have my MasterCard card, Cap One. Okay, and it's gonna ask you these things here. So you wanna create a goal to pay off your balance over time. You wanna budget for the entire balance or skip for now. So what I'm going to suggest is you go ahead and let YNAB set a goal if that is your goal to pay this balance off over time or if you wanna pay it off an entire amount or if you wanna skip it, you can do however you like. I like to create goals and which we'll cover here in a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and let YNAB automatically do that. It's going to ask me when I want to pay it off by, and I actually want to pay it off by March. And to, um, right now it's December 12th, but my goal is to pay this card off by March. And next, you'll see now that it has a negative balance here because it's a negative account. So I'm going to add, but this is my uh, local bank because all my other banks are online. And I'm going to put in here that we have $2,500. Okay, so this one is not linked. And how you can tell what's linked and what's not is usually if there's there's a check mark right here by um, the other side of the dollar sign. So you know that it's linked. But this one, as you can tell, is not. Now let's say that I wanted to go in and link my account 
if you click right click on that you can go in and actually link them so that it would be linked. this is my tutorial budget for you I don't really want to link this account so now that we've just got these ones in here um, with most people I'm going to say probably only have one checking account one savings account and you more than likely have a credit card or two I have three but for video we're only going to utilize the one and you'll see here that it added a credit card payment okay you cannot you can't change the activity in here you can put in here how much you want to budget for that, but you can't change it. And you'll see this number here is with the D by it. So the, this is a little tool I have called um, Toolbox for YNAB, and I will um, link that below for you to get it if you want yours to look like mine. I will also link a video to another person who um, does some training videos for the toolbox and what it could do. So this is an added feature. It's totally free. It doesn't cost you anything, but most of the time this is not here. So the cool thing about these categories, so these are called category groups. You can take them and you can move them around. You have um, your immediate obligations, which is, you know, your basically your floor walls, your rent, mortgage, clothing, internet, etc, etc. So I don't use this one interest or fees transportation you can rename all of these it's totally customizable okay so I get paid two times a month right but I have immediate obligations so just like everybody else however I like to break it up by payday on the 10th obligations right so now I'm going to create one more and it's gonna be payday on the 25th first obligations all right so <clears throat> my rent and mortgage it's, i have rent unfortunately i don't have a mortgage payment i will within the next year i hope and then we have so my first obligations we got rent electric water internet groceries um i have got house gas for the car or sorry for heat heating and um heating water First obligations, I have a Netflix payment. Netflix, first obligations is my Verizon cell phone. That's it. So because we have the ability to customize all of this, what I like to do is go in here and I put the dollar amount. So it's 245 and some change, but it is always due on the 13th. My Netflix, it's 12, it's 12, yeah, it's $12. No, it's $14.08. I just upped it. So $14.08, and it's always due on the 10th. Gas bill runs about $50 a month, and it is always due on the 29th. My rent is $8.50, and it obviously is always due on the 1st. Electric runs about $150, and it is due on the 5th. My water runs high at about 120 a month. That's water, trash, and sewer, um, and it's always due on the 25th. Internet runs about 80. Now I just changed this from internet and cable to only internet, so it actually might be less, but it is always due on the 10th. Groceries, Obviously, we don't have um, a set amount, transportation, gas costs. I typically spend about 160 a month in gas. So, but I, I, I move these. I don't leave those in here. Okay, so one other thing I do is I come up here and I create another category group and I call these living expenses. And what living expenses are, are groceries, and you, you can drag and drop. Okay, so you want to make sure that that opens and drop that in there. Transportation, so this is going to be, and then I'm going to change the name of this to gasoline. We have groceries. I put in a category, a subcategory for stuff. I forgot to budget for something that would go underneath of this is you know those oh no this just happened so two weeks ago um, my son's actually it was a week before Thanksgiving my son's dog got hit by a car and died um, and it was $120 to get him cremated and so that was that was an unexpected expense but if I hadn't had been budgeting for things I forgot to budget for I would have had to take money from something else in order to pay for that so this is a really 
good expense category that every single month I put a set amount into that and I leave it in my main checking account which is this one just because as a local bank if I needed to do it with cash I could just go in and get it I wouldn't you know what I mean things like that so there's a lot of different um, things that could happen I needed to buy some wiring to keep my my mastiff all of a sudden learned how to jump over a fence and uh, my six foot block wall and so I needed to go buy some fencing in order to keep her in the yard that is is those few few things um house stuff so we could do like household items which could include shampoos conditioners lotions face soaps you know um it could be dish soap laundry soap all those different all those different items um and now let's dive into true expenses they're more like long-term expenses or yearly expenses which is kind of it, that and i renamed them um that exactly so that i know you know like hey i need to put some money away for this or put some money away for that etc auto maintenance is kind of like obviously we know what auto maintenance is so that needs to be in there Home maintenance, if you own a home, I do not, so I don't have this category. I do have renter's insurance. Anything medical, um, if you wanna have money put away for medical reasons, then this would be a good one. I don't do this. Clothing, again, I have clothing in a different category. Gifts, I have in a different category. Giving, I do. Computer replacement is a long-term um, expense, but it's typically, it would be like every few years. Oh, you can do it that way. Software subscriptions, I do not have. And then there's that stuff I forgot to budget for category that is preset by, by YNAB to be in a longer term yearly expense, but I don't keep it there, so I'm gonna go ahead and delete it. I do want to mention that I use my savings accounts for this, okay? So on my regular budget, it is named Ally Savings. It's not labeled as this. So I have it labeled that, and I'll show you why I do that in a little bit. Um, now in that, what you could do is bucket. So if you've ever um, saved like, if you like, let's say that you know that you want to take a vacation next year, right? So that's going to be a long-term savings plan. It's going to be a long-term expense because it's only going to happen once a year. Or let's say that you want to save for your YNAB subscription, right? So mine is due in June of next year. 90 is just a rough estimate. I don't remember off the top of my head exactly how much it is. Um, or let's say my another yearly one that I have is my Amazon Prime, which is 130 roughly, and it is due in July. You can do would be like your emergency fund account, and like let's say that you wanted to save for three months worth of expenses, then you need to get a dollar amount in here. But for this video purpose, I'm just gonna put in 5,000 is what I want. Um, now this emergency fund could be any, like if you get laid off, okay, this is a Dave Ramsey um, financial goal, and so this is one of them, right? Okay, so that's those. Quality of life goals, again, your vacation, but I put it under long term because that's something that I save for. Fitness would fit in there because that's quality of life. I do yoga and that is between $35 and $55 a month and it's just due whenever I run out of credit so I don't need a due date. I do have a gym membership and that is $22 and it's due on the 17th of every month. Education, if you are, so I actually am going to be getting my yoga certification so I'm gonna put that in here. I haven't added it to my other budget but I would like to save for it so that I don't have to spend a bunch of money up front and that is $5,000 or $300 a month. Quality of life could also be vitamins and supplements. I use a company called Plexus and when I order it regularly, I typically spend about $250 a month. Debt repayments. This is where the fun stuff comes into play, let me tell you. So I have quite a bit. I have car loan. However, I'm almost done. I've only got 26, no, 
so I just made a payment. So 2200 left on it, and here it is always due, and I pay 340 a month. Student loans, if you have student loan debt, auto loan, it was, I have a lot of debt, but I'm not gonna throw it all on, on this. Um, I have a personal loan due on the 10th of the month. We'll leave these in here for now. So just for fun, dining out, gaming, music, fun money. Okay, I'm not a gamer, so I don't, I don't do that. For music, I don't do, so dining out, fun money, family movie night. You could do whatever you want, anything that's just for fun. I renamed this and have different categories on my real budget, which at some point I will show you that so that you can kind of understand but for now we're just trying to get started right so our credit card MasterCard Capital One I have this $1,116 balance and YNAB automatically created that goal for me so I'm going to show you what that looks like okay so over here it will tell you if you had anything left over from November's budgeted amount It'll show you your budgeted this month, activity this month, available balance, which is zero, but it also shows you right here how much you need to budget every month in order to stay on track to pay this off by March 1st, 2020. So that's one thing I do want to mention. When we are editing goals, let's say that I had something big come up and now I cannot pay this off until April. So I'm going to go in here, I'm going to edit, I'm going to edit, and I'm going to put April. Now it defaults to the first day of the month, not the last. And I wasn't aware of that when I first started. Um, so I wanted to make you guys aware of that. Hit save goal. And now look, it actually drops it down to a, to a smaller dollar amount. All right. So now that we've got all of these in here, okay, these are just the basics, right? So my next payday is the 5th. Oops, and I need to I need to break my first obligations up, right? So my gas is due, my rent is due, my water bill is due, and that's it because on the 25th paycheck, those are the only ones that are that are the immediately due amount. So in order to put the amount in that you want um, or that you need and uh, to budget for, let me stop for a second. Because we added these accounts in, this gives us a balance up here of $2,544.80 that actually needs to be budgeted. So when you get paid, you need to manually enter that amount. Now, because I put a starting balance of $2,500, it will mess with it. So I'm actually gonna change this to zero. Okay, so this is just a, and you'll see that it changed this to be budgeted amount to what I have in my alley and my, my interest checking and my um, high interest savings account. So as you can see that right there. Um, so let's go in and let's pretend that I just got paid. So we're gonna hit add transaction. It's gonna pop up with the date. Payee, now you can put whatever you want. I, on my real budget, I put my company's name. Some people just put employer. This always needs to be inflowed and go to to be budgeted. Always, 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 always. My inflow, typically my checks are 2100, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and hit save. Now, if we jump back over to budget, you will see that this increased. You're also going to see these dollar amounts over here reflecting those accounts. Now, one thing I want you to listen to me on this is do not pay attention to this when you're first starting. Not when we're budgeting. When we're budgeting, you want to pay attention to this to be budgeted, and this is where it can get confusing it can instill a little bit of fear in you. Um, it's different than most budgeting apps or softwares or however you wanna word that. I'll do another video on how to actually segment these and understand why all these dollar amounts come up here. Now, one thing I do wanna mention though is that because I have all these different accounts, not all this money is in one account, right? So do you remember when I said that I, I title my savings um, for my long-term and yearly expenses as ally savings? The reason for that is because I need to make sure that I only budget my savings account, if that makes sense. So let me do that really quick. So I have $4.80 in my, in my savings account. So I'm going to come in here 
and I'm going to highlight this row so that the box pops up under the budgeted column. I'm just going to put $4.80. So in my emergency fund bucket in my alley savings account, I now have $4.80. Do you, let me close this. So do you see across the top of each one of these blue lines, it tells you the budgeted amount, the activity, the available, but do you see where it says budgeted? So it's showing that it's there. The available amount is $4.80, which now matches this dollar amount. So on my regular budget, because I have two checking accounts, I have a separate category. So I have a separate category for uh, my alley checking account because I pay different stuff. Now, sometimes people create separate budgets for each bank they bank with. I don't, I want everything in one spot because if it's everywhere, it's gonna confuse me and I'm going to lose track. So I wanted to make sure you are very much aware of that. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna dive in and get my expenses added on each one of these, okay? So payday on the 10th, we already know. We don't even have to mess with that. I can move it all the way down here. Right now I have $360 left. I can do my budget for that credit card payment. It's only leaving me $136, guys. Ah. Don't have to do this because it was on the 17th. Okay, so we are down to $86.79 for um, the needing to be budgeted amount. And in order to save time, and this is one thing I do, is I create a category for deposits. So if I have an additional, <clears throat> excuse me, money left over from everything that I've already budgeted for, I'm going to just type it in that I want to put that money into my Alley savings account, right? So this requires a couple of steps that I will show you. I wanted to get everything to be budgeted down to a zero dollar. So this is the idea behind YNAB is that you give every dollar a job. It's the same concept that Dave Ramsey does, except we aren't budgeting for the full month, right? We're only budgeting for the money that we have. So one thing that I need you to remember is here, remember we've got this $40 in the separate checking account. Okay. So where is that going to come from? Well, we could say that bills only are paid out of our local bank account and that living expenses are going to be paid out of our checking account for from Ally. Or what I was telling you earlier on how I have a separate total separate category group for my Ally checking account, we can do it like this. And this is how I do it. Now, mind you, if you don't have that separate account, this does not apply to you. But in there right now, there's no category. So I'm going to put in there stuff I forgot to budget for. It's not always something I use. And I don't like to use this checking account too much because I want to build some interest. Even though it's only 0.10%, that's still the less I use it, the better. What you'll notice now, as soon as it update, got $100 available, but we really don't have $100 available. We really only have $40 available. So I need to change that to 40, right? So now this matches. So we've got my Alley Savings account. We haven't yet made this deposit, so this isn't, isn't correct, but I'll show you how we do that in just a second. So if you minus, I think it was 82 something that we put in. Oh, I messed up. Let's change this. Hold on. We're going to put it back at $4.80. So now I've got $141.99 to be budgeted. So let's say that that's not right. So 480 right here. Okay. Deposits to be made. This is a group that I will budget it here before I make it. So let's just say that we're going to transfer $100 into the Alley Savings account. So what we're going to do, because it's coming from this bank, is we're gonna come in here, we're gonna do a transaction, and we're gonna do transfer to high interest savings and it does it says two from but it does not need a category the outflow is 100 because it's coming from this bank account now watch what happens so we put that in here it shows now that we have 104. so if we go back to our budget we did make this deposit right so it's it's cashed out now but now i can come in and, and create buckets on that hundred if i wanted to so this adds some extra steps and if you're just beginning i wouldn't necessarily 
have buckets underneath of your savings account. I would just have one dollar amount there and that can work like that. If we wanted to take this other $46.79, we could do the same thing again here into the checking account. So we could do deposits made, or you could even put made or to be made, however you want to label that. So, but I want to take that other $46.79 from this bank account and put it into my check, my other checking account. So I would come back in, I would add a transaction, I would put transfer to Alley Checking, and how much did I say that was? $46.79, right? So now we come here, we're still at zero. Deposit made $46.79. My total balance in my checking account now matches. So if you see this $86.79, Allie 10480, 10480. And there you go. So that's how I do that with multiple accounts. Not everybody does that. It's completely up to you. I know it makes it a little bit more difficult. If you need to see a video without the additional accounts, I would be more than happy to make one for you. So, but this is the basic idea here. So now if you are not linked, if you do not have your account linked, you have to go in and you have to manually add these expenses okay so my pay on the 25th I have to pay rent gas and water so I pay rent with a check I drop it off so I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna put the date and I'm gonna put century 21 and it create automatically creates a payee and I'm gonna type in rent and I'm gonna select the rent amount so on memo you can put a check number okay I have the toolbox kit, which allows for a check number column. So I just put it right there and it is an outflow for $850. Now look, it took it from here and it added the activity here. And if you click on that, it shows you what the activities are, right? That's one thing that's super cool. Now let's say that we're gonna go in and we're gonna pay the gas bill. All right, I'm sitting at my computer and paying my bills, so I just paid gas, so I would put uni gas, and then I would type in gas here. Make sure that you pick the actual bill and not a separate one, and you can put a memo like online payment, information, numbers, right? Outflow, and let's just say it was less than the $50 that I budgeted. So we're just going to put $36.23. Now it took it out of the balance here. You'll notice that it shows $36.23 was paid. So you have $13.77 left over. So there's two things you can do here. You can leave this here so that you can start budgeting ahead and aging your money so that in a month, well, in about three months, if you never touch the leftover and your gas bill is always less than what you budget for, this will start building. And so then you can, in three months, you'll be paying your gas bill from that money that slowly has built up in months because you didn't use it. Now, let's say that your income's not very much and you really need to budget all the dollars you can, right? So you could come over here and change this to 36.23 budgeted. It's gonna show the activity still, but it's gonna show a zero dollar amount, okay? So you could do that. And if you do that, that goes back up to this here, to the to be budgeted dollar amount. So then you could put it wherever you wanted to. But the purpose of having a budget is so that you can start living ahead instead of living paycheck to paycheck. So we're going to leave this in here. All right, so again, we're gonna pay the water bill. So let's come over to your actual bank that you're paying it from and let's add that in. Now let's say again that it was less than we expected, okay? It removes it from your bank balance. It puts it under water. Here's the actual activity. Here's what's left. Again, we are trying to stop living paycheck to paycheck, so let's leave this in here. 
Okay. So one thing real quick I want to show you, and this again is where it can get confusing. It could get unnerving. It could get fearful. You're like, but wait a minute. I have $964 still in my bank account. Don't pay attention. Again, don't pay attention to these numbers. We're always working from this. All right. The only time we're going to start paying attention to these numbers is when we reconcile our accounts. Whenever you do it, it could be once a month. It could be once a week. It could be daily. It could be however. So because it's Christmas and I'm doing a lot of, or because I did a lot of Christmas shopping. I was kind of reconciling my account every single day so that I knew I really was staying on track because I still have that fear instilled in me of, oh no, I'm not, this isn't right. Okay. But it is right. Um, but I wanted to show you quickly. So let, let's say you've got all this money, right? You've, you've scheduled or budgeted for all this stuff. You haven't spent any money. So you've got all these available balances. Let's move into January. And this is where the budget budgeting comes into play where you can get out of the paycheck to paycheck rut. We're moving into January. Look, it automatically transferred over as still in the account, still available, but it's not populating and to be budgeted because it's still in your account, but it's from last month. Okay, so I hope that makes sense and kind of shows you how you can learn to budget where you're not living paycheck to paycheck. You're able to move forward with the money that you have and you're able to start to start um building your, your money, building your account balances, you're able to start aging your money is what uh, YNAB calls it. So if we come back over to December really quick, I wanted to show you one more thing. We need to make our payment for 223.21 to our credit card. So we're gonna come back into the main checking account. We're gonna add a transaction. We're gonna type payment. And it, you'll see this automatically, these payees come up to from MasterCard. It doesn't need a category. The outflow is 223.21. We're gonna hit save. It deducts it from here and it applies it to here. And you'll see the starting balance. And again, now it's showing the activity. It's got the little pie here saying like, you know, how much your goal target and if you're staying on track, it tells you how complete you are on that. Um, total needed to go is now eight ninety two eighty four. All right, guys. So that is it for this first video on the basics of how to get started with YNAB. I hope that you guys found this video helpful. And um, let me know below in the comments what you would like to see me do in future videos to help you learn how to budget and get out of the paycheck to paycheck rut. Thank you and have a wonderful day.